Okay, our next speaker, I'm pleased to welcome Vina Misra. Hi, Vina. Hi, Teresa. Uh, she is the Distinguished Professor in the Department of Electrical and Computer Engineering and Director of the Nanosystems Engineering Research Center on Advanced Self-Powered Systems of Integrated Sensors and Technologies, or ASSIST, at North Carolina State University. Go right ahead, Vina. Thank you, Teresa. Can you see my slides? Yes. All right. Uh, well, good afternoon, everyone. I'm very honored to be invited to this meeting uh, with so many accomplished scientists and engineers discussing the various contributions that NSF has made and is making to engineering. Um, I have been associated with NSF from the time that I was a graduate student at NC State where I worked uh, in the ERC called AEMP, one of the very early ERCs that Nino Masnari was running. Uh, and then when I started my faculty career, I uh, got uh, my grants from NSF in uh, different ideas surrounding devices. And then I had the fortune of working in the Freedom ERC as a PI, uh, working on wide band gap devices. And then in 2012, I was successfully able to lead a team and win this uh, assist ERC with my colleagues and partners. And today I'm delighted to share with you the story of our center with you. Um, it is a partnership uh, of many universities with NC State being the lead university, but we are partnering closely with FIU, Penn State, uh, UVA, and we're also working with other uh, uh, schools for strategic partnerships, for example, in medicine. <clears throat> so let me uh, uh, jump into the motivation behind our center. Our vision right from the beginning has been to address chronic disease management uh, since it is such a critical problem in America, in fact, globally. 60% uh, of Americans have some sort of chronic disease such as diabetes, heart disease, lung disease, and treatment of these diseases takes up majority of our healthcare resources. Uh, and the recent pandemic, which we're hopefully uh, beyond, has, has sadly made it even more clear that when people have chronic diseases, their outcomes with COVID are not very good. Mortality rates are higher. So we targeted the management of chronic diseases through our disruptive always on devices. And the vision of our assist center was to enable this paradigm. We wanted to build continuous monitoring of variety of important health parameters through self-powered wearable devices. These devices would be powered by the human body itself uh, either through body heat or body motion, even through body fuels. Um, and these uh, devices would have multiple sensors on them, physiological, bio uh, biochemical, and environmental. <clears throat> uh, they'd be wireless, wireless, and comfortable, and generate informative data. Oops. <clears throat> Assist technologies, uh, we wanted them to be unique in monitoring these con chronic conditions. Why? Because we wanted them to operate continuously. That was our key objective so that we would not miss a single beat. They would have multiple modal, multimodal sensing capability, which can be correlated to get a much more sophisticated picture of health. They would access new digital biomarkers from the body using different novel sensing mechanisms. And with all of this information combined, we wanted to explain, influence, and even predict health outcomes. And at the end of the day, gain fundamental insight into disease. So with this dr vision driving us, we organized ASSIST into the three-plane diagram, which you have heard uh, um, a lot about, uh, and especially in the last presentation. And this is really the flagship of the ERC program. And we use this really to drive everything we do in the center. Uh, our test beds uh, sat at the top of this three-plane diagram, uh, and the te test beds were uh, selected and defined based on the needs of the chronic disease use cases. And then these test beds uh, then, of course, uh, drove the research uh, in the center to overcome the barriers uh, that were uh, present in, in achieving the, the, the test bed demonstrations. <clears throat> so we started with the assist engineered system, which is really uh, shown in this diagram in a very a high level way. Uh, the assist engineer system consists of key components that enable the self-powered operations. So, for example, energy harvesting from the human body itself ultra low power electronics that are able to work with the amount of energy that is available from the body, which is not a lot. Along with that, multimodal sensors to make the system intelligent, antennas and radios that can 
propagate the information to a, to a base station or a smartphone using very little power. And so this is a complex system. And in order to reduce the risks and gain early wins, we divided this, uh, this engineer system into two tracks. And we call this, um, I'll get to that in a second, we call them uh, the sensors track and the energy track. And together, these two tracks in, worked in sync to help us drive the vision of the center, which we're very happy to have made the advances that we have so far. So most important thing is that we had to, and we had to translate our engineered system to the targeted use cases, in other words, test beds. And the way we did this is we, we talked to clinicians and we talked to the, to the users of the technology. We selected five applications shown here uh, uh, because of various reasons. Um, many cases, it's the number of people impacted by these conditions. And then we talked to the clinicians to understand what are the gaps in these directions and built our, our basically our specification requirements. Uh, doing this, we then built a, we projected forward a roadmap of 10 years with these two tracks that I mentioned, the sensors track we call the HET and the uh, self-powered energy track, which is the SAP. And we were quite um, uh, uh, ambitious in this regard. We wanted to get more and more energy from the body so that it could get bigger and bigger in terms of the sensing capability. At the same time, we wanted to have more and more sophisticated sensors with the goal that at the end of our 10 years, we would be able to combine these two tracks to build this uh, self-powered multimodal system. <clears throat> so our approach to date, I can, I'm happy to say our approach to date has resulted in us meeting and demonstrating all of the various roadmap uh, generations that we had mapped on early in the center. Uh, for example, our cardiac monitoring shirt, our cardiac armband, and then our self-powered biochemical platform. On the, uh, on the sensor side, we built an asthma platform, a wound man monitoring platform. The only uh, test bed that we weren't quite able to uh, demonstrate to date is one that required some fundamental understanding of what's released in sweat when it comes to medication. Uh, and that has taken, all, taken a separate route um, for advancement. So over the last 10 years, ASSIST has built multiple wearable technologies. Uh, some of these are shown here. Um, we are a systems uh, driven, we use a systems driven approach in, in building uh, and defining our research. And many of these test beds and, and wearable systems have been um, deployed uh, to our industry partners as well as clinical labs. And I'll show you one of our test beds in a little bit more detail. Uh, this is our vigilant cardiac monitoring test bed. This test bed is a uh, battery free uh, vigilant ECG monitoring shirt that uh, is uh, uh, running off of human body power in the form of body heat. Uh, on the top here, you see the, uh, body, uh, the heat sinks that are on top of a thermoelectric array uh, that is converting uh, Braden's body heat into usable power. On the back side of the shirt uh, are all the ultra low power custom electronics uh, and, this, and the sensor electronics as well. This particular test bed is only possible to be achieved with advances in the areas that are shown here. We needed textiles that had dry electrodes to provide good signal and comfort. We needed state-of-the-art thermoelectric harvesters that were flexible, but still provided us good power. We needed ultra-low power SOCs that worked at a fraction of the power compared to what is available uh, commercially. Uh, this also includes the radios. We had to customize our radios so that they would not consume power because we wanted this test bed to generate real time data on the person's cardiac status. Along with that, we also built flexible antenna um, for uh, high efficiency uh, when placed on the human body. And um, since batteries do run out uh, of performance with, uh, with increased number of cycles, we also use super high density energy density, high energy density density supercapacitors to store the charge that was being generated by the thermoelectrics. And here is a quick uh, video of uh, Braden wearing the shirt. Um, let me fo fast forward a little bit. Uh, and this is, you can see the, the thermoelectric uh, with the heat sinks on top of it. Uh, the cardiac signals are being sent to the phone. Um, and Braden is, as he's walking, uh, we're able to generate uh, and pick up the data from his shirt. This is, a, uh, again, there's uh, completely powered by the human body. And as he proceeds from the smartphone, the, the distances are increasing. 
and we're able to get uh, signals from Braden. So this is uh, uh, one of our uh, successful demonstrations of our test, early test beds. And since then we have uh, realized that there might be a group of uh, individuals that might not want to constantly wear a shirt, but maybe they would wear an armband for, for vigilant ECG monitoring. And in this regard, we have also uh, achieved the same test bed, but with a different form factor. Uh, through the course of the last 10 years, we have worked on a variety of different research projects uh, that drive and enable our test beds. Some of these research projects we would consider um, convergent, um, and examples are shown here. We have demonstrated some of the highest performing thermoelectrics and some of the lowest power consuming uh, electronic circuits. Uh, we have a sweat collection platform that collects the sweat without the person or the individual having to generate sweat. So even when they're sitting in the couch, uh, we have new uh, created new enzymes for energy harvesting uh, from sweat from human body. And we've also used MEMS to deliver power to sensors that are implanted inside the body. So we're continuing to expand our direction and um, uh, apply the energy and, uh, harvesting principles to now uh, access information from inside the body. Uh, the ERCs are, are, are a great platform for bringing together multidisciplinary teams, multi uh, institutions together, and also a pipeline of students. And here are some of our metrics uh, to date. We have graduated over 90 PhDs in the, in the center and generated over 650 publications. Uh, we, um, because of our topic, uh, we are very entrepreneurial. We have spun out 10 companies um, and we have 82 inventions. We have numerous joint publications across the partner schools uh, and uh, multiple awards. Because of time, I won't be able to go into it, but this figure shows, uh, shows you basically how, what our center achieved in the beginning. Uh, this is a collaboration network showing in the beginning, we were very loosely connected with each other, but as the center grew, the connections between all of our different PIs in the center be became very dense and continues to proceed in that direction. Uh, another uh, metric that we uh, uh, we want to always keep an eye on is uh, how relevant is the work coming out of our program, and we are tracking our H index, uh, and uh, it's an interesting um, a number, but we are growing in our H index, and we are at 50 now, and uh, uh, this is something we use to uh, assess the impact of our research as well as our, as our systems. Um, we range uh, in our disciplines across the board. Um, I won't spend too much time here because as you might expect, we are of course capturing all of the engineering disciplines, but we also have medical sciences, uh, infectious diseases, uh, health professionals, and social sciences and humanities as well. Um, the ERC platform also allows us to innovate in education. Uh, in this regard, we have uh, several programs. We have a pipeline of students that are uh, in the uh, K through 12 uh, uh, age group, and we bring them to the ERC programs across all of our partner schools where they get exposed to uh, challenges that, that actually uh, uh, allow them to build wearable devices uh, that actually have a functionality. So we're exposing them very early on and hopefully building this pipeline for getting these students into engineering. We also have our minor and our capstone projects and we also have a translational engineering skills program because many of these skills uh, that you see on this list here are not necessarily taught in courses. And for our grad students and our undergrad students to be successful, we provide them with these extra skills by bringing in the experts from the field and helping to train our students. Um, I will um, <clears throat> skip a couple of slides in interest of time. Uh, but I wanted to show you in our undergraduate curriculum, we have steadily uh, uh, increased the, the exposure of our uh, variety of different topics to our students across of our partner schools. And uh, you can see on the left here, this is our undergraduate minor, which used to be very ECE centric. And over the years, as we have grown, it has become more diverse uh, in, the, in the disciplines that are involved. Uh, we are also partnering with uh, our sister ERC uh, here, all, also led by NC State. This center, Freedom Center, has graduated now, but we uh, built an REU site with them, 
and sort of bridge the gap from very low power, which is an assist, to very high power, which is in freedom, and expose the students to some combined uh, experiences where they could understand the, the impact of the entire range of power and what it can do for our society. Um, these are the kinds of students uh, that you see here then, and where they are applying and where they're getting jobs. Um, they, uh, our students are mostly going to industry and further uh, uh, and advancing health, uh, digital health. One particular example is of the student Saba here who actually went to Apple and uh, her work was uh, instrumental in Apple's, wa um, Apple's watch uh, getting approved for uh, detection of irregular heart rhythms. So we're very proud of Saba for, for creating that impact. Um, finally, I'd like to uh, say a few things about our industry program. Our industry program has uh, uh, members from, a, from the entire value chain, from materials to technologies, to components, all the way to data and medical devices. And um, we've also had a successful track record of startups. You can see some of the startup companies that are, are here. Uh, and we are also working actively with our companies to generate new assist funding. Uh, this Many of this is DOD funding. Uh, and we are also uh, engaging with them through joint technology development uh, and joint publications. Um, one company that came out of the center is Vitalflow. This is a uh, company that is looking at a spirometer, a carryable spirometer uh, for asthmatics and has recently got venture funding. And I think I will move forward fast. Um, finally, I wanted to say a few things about our commitment to the culture and diversity. Um, in our center, we have the opportunity to not only bring in individuals from underrepresented groups, but actually work on use cases that affect underrepresented groups. One example of that is transgender women uh, who have HIV and how their stress levels uh, are, uh, impede their quality of life. And this is something we can bring in to assist. Another one is the, the inefficiency of some of the optical uh, heart rate measurements when it comes to um, uh, people with different skin tones. Uh, and, and we also have the opportunity to really support Bill Reynolds, who is one of our founders of a assist startup company. And that company is now doing quite well. So with that, I'll conclude. And I'll, I'd really like to say that the ASSIST ERC has enabled us to use use case driven systems to drive cutting edge research. And really the test beds are the glue of the center that keep the team together, uh, keep the partner schools working on new problems. And especially now that, we, now that we are graduating, this test bed concept is allowing us to go after new proposals from NIH and DOD um, and uh, Homeland Security. So with that, I'm gonna stop uh, and uh, acknowledge everybody in my team. Yeah, that was fantastic. And uh, again, the, the importance of test beds and being able to think at the systems level is so critical. Um, so we are, it's time for the next speaker, but I hope you're here for the round table because I have some questions to ask and we're getting them in from the audience. Thank you so much, Vina. Thank you.